time to meet the maker. Today I'm talking to Nat McCallum of Would Love to Make. Hi Nat. Hey. So first of all, tell me a little bit about your business, Would Love to Make. Why? When did you start? What was your inspiration to start selling? How did you how did you come to start having a business? Oh, so uh I have been going about three years, I think, just over three years. Um, and I actually started because I had stopped all of my work to have my first child. So I used to do um, tutoring, things like that for schools. And it just, I didn't want to go back after I had my son. So I, I stayed at home and looked after him and enjoyed being a mum. And then 18 months later was like, I've lost me. Where have I gone? Um, <laughs> and I just, I need to do something for me again. And I missed making my background is in um fine art doing uh video and performance work installations things like that so so big stuff big things yeah. and i i just i missed it i really missed it um i jumped back in started with doing drawings for people um and illustrations and then i made my son a toy box and showed the people in his birth group um, and and a couple of them were like, "Can you make me one? That's really cool. That's really cool." Because it didn't. It wasn't just like a box that I had bought with stuff stuck on it. That it, I'd made the whole thing and, and cut everything out, and it was all like animal details and and painted and and you know. So it didn't look like any other toy box that was out there. And um, and it was just and that kind of idea of all oh, people like it people want it i could do this i can i can push it more and do more and and then i started having other ideas of other bits of furniture that would be useful and it just kept going sounds fantastic sounds like it was completely different from your fine art and your art installation background though uh, well kind of i mean my, my art installation background involved a lot of making big things so one of the last things I made um while I was doing my bachelor's was a life-size replica of a grand piano wow so it was just, and it's just playing with wood and seeing how it goes together and seeing what you can do with it and what I did with it was a nine foot by six foot full-size concert grand piano wow <laughs> something wow. To, I just I wanted to do something and so um where does yeah. your love of wood come from then? Have you got a family connection with that or anything at all? Or is it just something that you kind of fell into and found and discovered? Not massively. I mean, my dad's always been very hands-on making stuff. He likes um, he likes being busy. He's a massive train enthusiast. So he, he likes sort of doing all of those little models and things like that. Yeah. And um, it just we've we've just i've just always helped him doing things um and he's always made things for us so he made our tables when we were kids at, at home and, and things and i think it just followed on from there yeah. like why would i go out and buy it in a shop when i can just get a piece of wood and... i love that i love that so it's very practical but it's also bringing all your, your all your creativity as well i like that yeah i like so that I like the two so your first sales they were to people that you knew they were to people from your from that group that you had the connection with from babies being the same age yeah. where do you sell otherwise now that other people can find you um so most of my sales now come on etsy um and i also link that in with selling through facebook and i've just started trying to crack instagram i do say this every year <laughs> <laughs> and I probably get to like the middle of March and then just fall off the edge of it. But this year, absolutely this year, I am determined to be more present on Instagram as well. I like that. We heard it here. I'm gonna hold you to it now. You're accountable now. So yeah, I may be there by April, but I'll probably still try. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you find Etsy? Do you like Etsy as a platform for selling? Does it work work well for you? Yeah, it works really well, actually. It took a little while to get going. I think I didn't understand all the kind of rules of Etsy um, and how to really utilise it. But once I did get going with that, that really worked. And also, I think because it's very hard to get across to people just on a purely sales channel. 
that when you buy an item of furniture through me, you're having a making experience through me. So we are working together, designing together to make your product. You're not just picking something off a shelf and, yeah. you know, changing the colour. We're really designing it from scratch for you. And that's really hard to get across on something like Etsy. So that took time because I needed to be able to have done a lot of other pieces so I could show, you know, had a good portfolio, basically. Yeah. I like um, that. I like the fact that you yeah. call it a making experience. I love that. I really do like that. So how does that work for you and your customers? How does that actually translate into real life? Does that mean lots of emails, lots of messages, lots of phone calls? What does it mean? It's, it's message based because that seems to work um, best for people. And um, Etsy have recently got a bit better at being faster on the old message thing. So that's where Facebook used to be so good for me is because people were used to the instant messaging on there. Um, and Etsy is starting to do more and more of that. And so what happens is, is uh, you'll order the sort of the size, the base size that you might want from me. Um, and normally people would say, oh, I really like this design, but could we perhaps do it with like some rabbits or or like some spaceships or something like I want a spaceship design. Yep. And so I'll message you back with some like sort of more questions, um, just easy kind of stuff, because ultimately it's what's going on in your head. I'm trying to tease out and then we'll slowly work together where we come up with a sheet where it sort of ends up looking a bit like. Oh, wow. So we end up with an actual image of what it's going to yep. look like to work with. Um, and it, it just means that you can see what we're aiming for. We all know what we're aiming for. Um, it's You're setting the expectations. Bit of, and for you, you it's find that place in the middle. I like yeah. that. So how yeah. long does it, can it take to get to that point? I suppose it depends how long people, how quickly people reply to you, but how much back and forth does it normally take? sometimes people are there in like two messages they know what they want and it's just boom 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 they've seen a design that they quite like and they just want to tweak it yeah. and it's it's sorted and done some people it, it does take some time and um, it can the conversations can go over a few days and it takes as long as it takes basically i like that i like that do you ever have people say can you create me a harry potter um toy box and things like that and how do you handle that well i say no <laughs> <laughs> i'm um, glad to hear that <laughs> it cannot be it cannot be you know it, it can't have the harry potter figures on it it can't have the 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 sort of direct fonts and quotes and things yeah. like that you know it just can't it's do that but it's would just... you like a sort of a wizard inspired something um in these kind of colors we can make our own characters up to go with it um yeah. or it can have sort of elements of you know that the, the core details of what is it that you like about harry potter yeah and those core elements can then form the design that fit in with it you know i like that i like that i think and i think that's really really important because you must get that quite a lot i assume that people kind of go oh we are a my son's a spider-man fan or a, a specific thing that is yeah i mean it doesn't someone. happen too often because i think people have started to understand that you know i'm, I'm not a, a huge great big company that can take out massive licensing stuff <laughs> um, but that we that we can sort of work with that and i try to be quite clear on that on my listings as well that i just don't dabble in anything it's not worth is. the risk as a small business owner it really is not worth the risk because those big companies they own those designs and they have lawyers who they can afford to pay lots of money to and they would rather do that and come after you than than let you get away with it so it just really isn't worth it um, well, it's not very interesting for my creativity either to be honest true. i mean you know if, if you want a harry potter toy box i'm sure there is <laughs> go and get one like a disney one out there is it disney that is oh, universal studios isn't it you, yeah it's yeah. out there someone yeah. like, a company has bought the rights to be able to do it you can go and do that but if you yeah. want something that is made just for you that's been really thought about then you know we don't need to worry about all that branding stuff we can we can go somewhere completely unique 
I love that. I love that. Perfect answer. Absolutely perfect answer. Um, okay, so um, tell me about how you work because you're working from home. Toy boxes aren't small. No. <laughs> You've got small kids. How does this all work together? Oh, well, <laughs> would you like the in theory version or the in reality version? <laughs> In theory, I have a room in the house and uh, and I work in here very neatly and never spill into the rest of the house and it all works absolutely perfectly. Yep. In reality. Um, in reality, uh, I have this room. I have a room downstairs. I sometimes spill into the kitchen more than my husband is, is that... <laughs> happy about and um this winter i also put up uh like a uh like a steel patio cover thing so i've got a table saw outside and can work outside although it's still a bit cold i think i might invest in a heater for next year <laughs> uh, but i can do all of like the very um the very dusty construction stuff out there um right. and then bring the pieces back in and paint them and you see. have to love what you do to do that because it does take over your life. It has as much as it you've got that freedom to be at home with your your kids still that you're not having to go out to work. You're still really busy, aren't you? Yeah, and it, it's hard juggling it, especially when coronavirus means that the school's because <laughs> my eldest only started school in September, bless him. And, um, I bet you can almost count on two hands how many days he's been in almost. It's it's not been a lot. It's not no. been a lot. <laughs> and um and it's 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 hard because now I'm having to juggle um homeschooling like so many people and a four year old and a one year old and a table saw that's got a blade on it that's this big is just <laughs> no, not the best combination. I bet you need eyes it's in not... the back of your head. Yeah, and they've had to learn quite quickly like what no means and to not touch things and that's a good thing yeah it's it's a it's a juggling act but it's 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 good for them as well because they're learning all of this stuff at the same yeah. time they're watching me do all of this stuff you know my daughter's not going to grow up thinking that girls can't do yeah. making big stuff out of wood you know she's she's yeah. never going to think that because she's grown up with it yeah, amazing lessons. And the fact that she could, it's not, it is that side, but it's also the fact that you can run your own business and you don't have to have a job. It's one way to earn money is to have a job. Another way is to do it your own way. And I love yeah. that. That's that's fantastic. So makers go into business to make because they love their craft and they want to spend all their time being creative. But, you know, there's more to it than that. You know, there's other things you have to do, including marketing. Obviously, it's my love. But yeah. what do you think about it? Do you love it or do you hate it? Sometimes I love it and I really get into it. And um, you have inspired me to tell a story through my marketing, which means that it's easier to plan sort of a week or two of it in advance. And that does happen sometimes. And then I get really busy and so on to order <laughs> and, and I'm like, no, go away. <laughs> yeah, because the trouble is most makers will prioritise the orders once they come in and then the marketing can drop off, but then you can go quieter later with orders. You need that kind of marketing time. But yeah, I love that. I love that you say about the storytelling because it is, you've got to be able to, you're there to inspire your customers, to show them that they don't have to have Lego all over the floor and toys all over the place, that they can have something which is gorgeous, unique, handmade, that their child's going to love, which has the knock-on effect. Not only does it look good, but they will want to use it because it's theirs and they, they love it um yeah and they're not going to be trading on lego all over the place well yeah and especially when so many people at the moment they have the toys in the living room and it's always a bit of a compromise between is it something that goes with the parents choice of decor or something yeah. that is interesting to the children and yeah. i think a lot of people they come to me because they want something that matches both of that they want it to look nice in a room that they have to sit in yes but also appeals to the, the kids yeah i think it's brilliant i think it's amazing so what does your marketing look like how what do you do with your marketing you've already mentioned that it's facebook and instagram when you kind of do it but how what do you share do you share things with your kids in there do you because i think that would appeal to your audience or 
do you just show pictures of the toy boxes? What do you do? Um, it's it's mostly a sort of. I try to do a balance where you are seeing things as they're being made, or seeing things as they're being designed, and then seeing them in their their final sort of product and things. There's obviously times of the year where it feels like it's mostly the final thing, because <laughs> I just I'm trying to still be present. Um, yeah. And that is difficult in times of like the run up to Christmas, where it's just. You had a fantastic run up to Christmas, didn't you, with sales and orders coming in. You were busy. How you juggled all of it, I don't know, with the kids at home as well. Fantastic is an interesting choice of word. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a really good season. It was very hard season as as well but i mean worth it totally worth it so totally worth it but there's always part of so many people's christmases as well you know yeah. it's lessons to learn though isn't there that's the thing as a business owner that there's constantly things and ways that you can improve and do things and tweak things and i know not that we're necessarily going to have that conversation now but i know that you're already looking at how what's happened at the end of last year and how you can manage that differently at the same time next year yeah. and I think that's one of the things that I love about business that it's constantly evolving it's constantly a work in progress there's always ways to tweak and improve and, and change things um okay so that's what I love about running a business what do you love most about running your business um well I, I am doing something that I love doing I'm not just doing something that I have fallen into which is what I probably spent the first 10 years of my working life doing um <laughs> And in theory, I will get to a point where I am better able to balance it with work life, uh, with home life. So at the moment, it feels very work, work, work. But I know that there will come a time where it's it's balanced better and and it will be a better work life. You know, I get to spend all day with my dog and my children and just knocking around the house together. And although it's difficult juggling it like it's. It, I'm still here at least I'm, I'm yeah. still here with them and can do that you know we, we haven't hit lockdown panicking how we're going to manage yeah. all of a sudden being at home because we're used to it I'm used yeah. to it I'm already there in that mindset and that's yeah. nice that flexibility it's about flexibility it is all about flexibility I know when I first started my um craft business again it was for the same things I wanted to make sure that I was around obviously I haven't didn't have the craziness of coronavirus and lockdowns and schools closing and homeschooling I, I missed all that albeit mine are older now so they just kind of get on with it but it was about having that flexibility and that freedom to be able to not panic about what was going on if the kids were off sick or whatever else that like you were there and you had the time with them so I love that and I do also love that you can see past where you are now because obviously now isn't a normal time normally your oldest would be at school now and and things would be slightly different but actually you're looking further forward to go well this is where we are now but I know it will get easier and that actually it will be worth it and I think I think that's amazing I think that's brilliant that you've got that attitude I've got to otherwise I'd go mad <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. So it kind of links actually to what's the biggest challenges you face as a business owner? Because I almost think that your love is like two sides of a coin. That on the one hand, you love the fact that you're there, but actually that juggling act is possibly one of the biggest challenges. Or is it something else? Um, it is a bit like that. And and also I think working from home is a bit of a double-edged sword because you never get to fully switch off. It's always yep. there. Yeah. Um, and in my house right now, it is literally always everywhere. <laughs> um, but also, you can't, um, I think because you're always available, you're always home, you're, you're always about. It's very easy for people to think that you're not really working and you're not really, it's not yeah. a proper business, it's not a proper job. And, yeah. um, and it took me quite a long time to feel that what I was doing was valid and real and I deserved the time and space that I would have if I was going out and doing it you know if I had premises and I was going to the premises and doing it I would just wouldn't be here and it, it's it's 
taken quite a long time to for for me to feel like I'm running a, a valid proper business that I should be proud of. That's um, and I think that is because it's a, oh you know it's it's at home business and uh, it's not it's not really it is so and it's really hard. I think it takes time to educate. I mean, <laughs> not so much now being invited by a friend to go to have a coffee because of the specific timing but it, when I started it was that bit of like you you're saying no to people who are thinking oh you're free you can come and have a coffee or whatever it might be you go no I'm not I've got to do this but I know when I first started I used to kind of go I felt like I had to tidy the house before I could even start work and it was just like no actually you've got to sit down and get the work done first it is that it's learning how to prioritize and actually you should say take yourself seriously almost because if you don't nobody else will yeah yeah and that's that's actually been something that's that's come quite recently the idea that i i can say with sort of pride you know when people say what do you do i say well i make furniture for a living without flinching without squirming without feeling like it's not real it's just brilliant. what do you do for a living i make furniture Brilliant. And I love you have the word just in there because quite a few um, small business owners go, oh, I just do this. I just do that. I just do the, oh, I, 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 and they kind of dismiss it. So I love that. That's fine. That's a massive step. That's a massive step for a small business owner. Yeah. So, okay, last question. If you could share just one tip for someone who was starting out now, who was thinking of maybe starting an Etsy shop or running a handmade business of any kind, what would your one tip be that you'd give them? Um, <laughs> guess I'm a bit cheesy, but like, join your community at least because. <laughs> By my, when you say community, do you mean my community, the yeah, your community. business club? Because it was that point that was the tipping point for me. I know that's going to sound really corny and stuff, but but having you on board, and some of that is is more because of the club than the community. But you know, to give people a bit of sort of a small yeah. way in is is that that's that's when i got into my head that this was proper that i could do it and and things started to click into place and having that confidence you know that you you need to have that confidence to to say this is my business and it is proper and we are doing it i'm gonna do it yeah and and like it was you that gave me that to be fair <laughs> Well, I'm so pleased because I think what you do is absolutely brilliant. And I think you're really skilled and really talented. And to be able to take people's ideas of what's there into in from their head and translate it onto paper to go into wood, because wood's not the necessarily the easiest <laughs> medium to kind of work with. And to do that with two small children at home, with everything else that's going on in the world, and to stay as positive as you do most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have tips as business owners but to stay to keep that i think is absolutely fantastic so to have played a part in that i'm i'm over the moon um so yeah so just to qualify nat when she says the community i have a free group which is called the community and then we have a paid for membership which is the handcrafted business club which nat is part of um thank you that's been amazing absolutely brilliant thank you so so much <laughs> <laughs> she'll speak to you soon bye bye, bye.